Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to switch things up a little bit. This video is going to be about the top 10 rarest reptiles I've ever had come through my hands. I had to take a few things into consideration. This is not world's first genetic morph whatevers. This is just straight up rare reptiles. Animals that I felt like if I wanted to buy them right now, would I be able to find them on the market? Most of them know. Are people working with them? Probably not. Were they rare when I first saw these animals? Have I seen these animals again since the first time? I just took a whole bunch of things into consideration. The last one is kind of an honorable mention because I did not actually own it, but I did put my hands on it and it was really rare. So anyway, that's at the end. Let's get into it, you guys. Top 10 rarest reptiles, let's go. Number one on my list, boa nebulosa clouded boas. I actually owned 1.3 of these back in the late 90s. They were very rare back then. An endemic species native to the island of Dominica in the Lesser Antilles. Not to be confused with the Dominican Republic, this island lays way further south in the Caribbean. An amazing looking boa constrictor, very different looking than the others. I did not breed mine, I actually ended up selling them, which of course I regret, just like many other animals that I have sold in the past. Whether or not any occur still in the hobby, I am not sure. I have not seen or heard of any available since I sold my animals, so I'm not sure if they're even in the hobby any longer. So number two, Indian pythons. I had a pair that I raised from babies in about 2004, and I bred them in 2008. Sold the babies, I think I traded the adults. I wish I kept those. Indian pythons to me are just absolutely amazing and it's sad what's happened in the hobby. I think there's probably a couple breeders in the US that are still working with pure animals, but it's just another one of those species that's been hybridized or bred to make morphs or just not kept pure and they just kind of disappeared and evaporated. If I wanted to find Indian pythons right now, I'm not sure if I could, especially within the state of California that I hold residence in. These are ESA listed, crossing state lines is a whole nother story. It's kind of a mess, but um, I did breed them. I have photos of all the different uh, breeding phases and that sort of thing. Actually pretty cool. Something that I completely forgot I even worked with until I started going through my old hard drive and I found some photos. So luckily I did have those photos to show you Indian pythons. Number three, Lycodon subsinctus, the white banded wolf snake. Very, very rare. I do not know if there are any in captive collections at all. I had a couple. I did sell them at some point, but very, very rare. Whether or not those animals are still around, I have no idea. Luckily, I have video of these guys to show you instead of still photos. This snake is interesting because it's not venomous, but what it is is a Malaysian crate mimic. In fact, I have a little story to tell you guys about this one. I received the shipment from Malaysia. There was supposed to be three Lycodon in this shipment. Luckily, my supplier ships in opaque boxes, one animal per box, and I can see through and I can see what it is before I open the box. I'm looking at these three snakes and two of the snakes just don't look right. And instantly, something is telling me that these are crates. I looked closer, I grabbed the flashlight, kind of illuminated the scalation and I could see right away. Two Malaysian crates mixed in. So you have to be very careful and hopefully you're knowledgeable when you're unpacking these shipments, you guys. I could easily see 99 out of 100 people that could have been unpacking these boxes, would have been free handling these crates, taking photos and video for Facebook and, and Instagram, and God knows what could have happened. Luckily, they ended up in a well-experienced person's hands and nothing happened, but uh, always have to be careful. Number four, Lycodon ephranus. Another very, very rare wolf snake, not in the hobby. As babies, they're crate mimics, black and white banded. Another thing you have to be careful when you're unpacking animals like this. Now, as adults, they actually change to a like light chocolate color and they may retain like one or two bands in the forward portion of the body. They will also be yellow and black banded on their belly. So it's pretty obvious to tell the adults from actual venomous crates. Babies, not so much. Another rare one. 
Number five, Oligodon signatus, another very, very rare one. These animals are rare in nature. You could spend an entire lifetime herping through the jungle and never even see one. I only received one in the entire time that I've been doing importing. It was an amazing animal, very different body style than normal kukris, very long and slender with a red belly, very tiny head, a specialized feeder of course, um, house geckos, but uh, amazing animal, the only one I've ever seen. So number six is actually not a snake, it is a gecko, Curtidactylus chan home. I managed to import a couple of these in my early, early days, a beautiful gecko species, probably coming from some specific cave somewhere. I have never seen any in the hobby since. I've never seen any in the wild, although I've seen many Curtidactylus in cave systems, but I don't know where this animal came from. Very, very rare, an amazing species. Number seven, Anteresia papuensis. I apologize to viewers of this channel, I'm kind of beating a dead horse with this one, but it definitely does qualify as a top 10 most rare reptiles that I've owned. I have the first and I believe only three animals in captivity anywhere in the world. Very excited about this project and I just had to mention it. I couldn't do this video without mentioning it. It's a rare animal, what can I say? Number eight, Steganotus cuculatus. Steganotus is a small colubrid snake. It occurs in Australia, Papua New Guinea, and West Papua. I managed to get an albino male cuculatus way back in 2013. I tried and I tried to find even just a normal female that I could breed it to. I was never able to get a mate. This animal just lived completely by itself. It was really sad. I tried to bring that animal into the hobby and it just never worked out. Really, really interesting animal, kind of a high energy animal, did not want to be held at all. I've seen many of these actually in our trips to West Papua, and every time I see one, it reminds me of my albino. I tried, you guys. Number nine, Sunazenodon. These snakes are quite rare in the hobby. I've seen them come through in shipments here and there, but for the most part, if you wanted to go find any right now, you would be hard pressed to find any surplus animals available. There's a couple people working with them. They're specialized feeders. They come from China. They don't like warm temperatures. A very, uh, I'd say an advanced animal that needs kind of specific care. The shipment that I received was a mix of Bambusacola and Macrops, some really pretty animals in there quite variable in color and pattern, really amazing. They also are a cobra mimic. They have the ability to flatten out their throat and they will kind of raise up and posture a little bit. Really, really neat animals. Number nine, Sunazenodon. And last but not least, number 10, Varanus flavescens. Now this is my honorable mention because I didn't actually own this animal. I came across this animal somewhere in around 2004 or 2005 in Chatuchak Market in Bangkok, Thailand. I managed to get the owner to allow me to take photos of this animal. I held the animal. It was absolutely amazing. I actually recognized what this animal was when I first saw it because I had some Varanus books. There was one photo that was being shared around through publishing company. I think it was TFH. Um, they frequently like share licensed photos and it was the same photo over and over and over again. So I was sure to take multiple photos because I knew that this animal was super rare. I have not seen or heard of one since then, not even mentioned by the Facebook experts, Instagram, YouTubers. I feel like this animal is almost all but forgotten. It's an amazing, amazing monitor lizard from India. And that's gonna do it for today's video, you guys. Top 10 reptiles based on my criteria. I know this list is probably way different than most other top 10 whatevers that you may see on YouTube. Maybe you saw something that you didn't know existed. Maybe you learned something. I'm not really sure. If you know anybody with Indian pythons, put it in the comments below. I wouldn't mind grabbing a pair of those if there are some pure ones left anywhere around. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys in the next one. Take care.